right? And getting the right people. So when you talk about rebuild, how long is it going to take us to change culture? Um, again, the, the beauty of our game in baseball is you're playing against the game itself, right? And when you look at what Missouri has been able to do over the last few years, there's been very competitive pieces there. Um, and now we just have to shift the mindset and get them to understand that the only thing that matters is your intent and your effort when you go out on the field and that we're going to go out there and take it to everybody else. Everything else doesn't, is it, doesn't equal up to having anything to do with how we're going to play, um, you know, play the game. When you look at it from a developmental standpoint, that is the one thing that in having conversations with Desiree and Blair and, and Nick, um, we need to have the same developmental tools as anybody in the country. And if we have the right developmental tools and the right people in place, then our ability to compete with anybody in the country is the same as anybody else's. When you look at the jump up to the SEC, what, what stands out to you most? You know, I mean, it, at the end of the day, it's it's deep, right? It's, you know, when you talk about your your 14th team in the league, um, a team that won a national championship a year ago, your 13th team in the league won a championship, national championship two years ago. Um, so. So it's, it's a deep competitive league, uh, but where we're at in this, this landscape of college athletics, there's a lot of parity in college baseball. And so we may need to put ourselves in a position to catch that wave and ride it and never look back. Eric, a lot of symmetry obviously with Coach Jameson hiring you here and then on your staff at Memphis. What were your conversations with him like the last few days with, with the chance to come back? He and I have always been really, really close, um, and we both obviously share an affinity for this place, and, and he's a mentor for me. And, um, you know, I asked him, am I crazy? Uh, you know, and, uh, and because we both love this place, and, and when you look at his tenure here as a head coach, uh, some of the most successful time in the history of the program, and so no better person than me to lean on to him to say, hey, man, I believe that we can be one of the nation's top programs. Do, am I crazy for thinking that? And he's like, we were on that track. So no, you're not, and and so with him and I having those conversations, it was easy for me. Other than finding Max Scherzer, Aaron Crow, and Kyle Gibson, what do you take from Tim's time here that, that can make this successful? The mentality, the the, the culture, tough, um, gritty, um, all those types of things, hard hard working, um, and, and just playing the game at a at a very competitive level, um, and again despite any of the things that may be deemed as disadvantages, right? The one thing that our kids have to understand, we're never going to be victim, victims of our own circumstance. It is what it is. Um, and if it doesn't fit you, then this isn't the place for you. But we're not going to make excuses for our ability to not go out and be competitive. Nothing affects that but us. And so we need to understand that's how we're going to go about our business. How do you go about engaging, and maybe in some cases re-engaging the alumni of the program? That seems to be really important to a lot of successful SEC schools. So what does that look like? How do you go about you know, getting on track with some of the guys who support you? I'm pretty fortunate that I know a bunch of them already. Um, and so I think for me, that'll be easy. Um, and, and, and I know a bunch of them from spanning years, guys that played here in the 80s to guys that we recruited that played for us here in the 2000s. So bridging that gap um, is not going to be a problem. Um, as you can imagine, I was just telling, telling some people the other day, uh, just as of yesterday, I had 422 unread text messages. Well, as I scroll through, I start to hear from the Rick Zagonis um, of the world. Uh, Kyle Gibson and I had a conversation. Um, Ma Bryce Montez de Oka's mother called me um, and congratulated me. So getting back to that, I'm, I'm not worried about that at all because those guys know the time and effort that I put in when I was here. They knew how important it was to me when I was here, so they know that I'll be representing them uh, in the best light and getting us back to where we need to be. And how important is, I mean, whether you look at David Price and Vanderbilt or Todd Helton and Tennessee, there's tons of examples. How important is that in college baseball right now? Oh, it's huge because when you have former players that are alums, that are big leaguers, that is to show what we're capable of. So then now the discussion isn't, well, this guy's produced, this program's produced this, or this program's produced that. Look at what we've produced. So if it was capable for these guys to come through and put themselves in a position to have long tenures in the, in the big leagues, get a bunch of accolades, be Mr. 3030, um, win a Cy Young, all those types of things, that means it's possible for you as well. Jared, when you interviewed um, the discussions you had, how much focus was there on facilities? Is there a vision? Is that a concern for you? Is something Long -term, short -term? You, you discuss it, but it doesn't matter uh, for me personally. Um, again, 
if you were telling me that we were playing on a field that had different dimensions than everybody else, well, wait a minute now, we're not on a level playing field. But when we have the same things at the basic core that everybody else has, then that's all that matters. Would we like to have some different things? Yes, we would. But again, as I told you, we just mentioned, teams 14 and 13 in our league who have everything are teams 13 and 14 in our league. Coach, you're the first black head coach in SEC history, I believe, of the own current one in Power 5. What does that mean to you personally? Special. Um, again, you're talking about, uh, unfortunately, we're in 2023 talking about breaking glass ceilings when it comes to those types of things. Um, hopefully, uh, as I stated last year, hopefully we get ourselves in a position where that's not so such a big deal. Um, but what I do understand is I understand the magnitude of it, specifically in the landscape that we're in. When we talk about the lack of black players in the game uh, at the major league levels and at the youth levels. So hopefully this puts us in a position where people understand what is capable when you go about your business the right way and we start to rejuvenate that interest and we create more opportunities for coaches and players coming along. Coach, what was it like to call and talk to your wife and talk to your family and say, Mizzou's <coughs> home? Um, what was that interaction? <laughs> so uh, I'll give you the story about with, with, with our boys, uh, with my wife. Um, keep in mind, uh, we just moved. Um, and so um, she got text messages from people and, um, and uh, that, that there was a change. And, and she knows how I feel about this place. We were married uh, here, uh, not here, but when we got married, we were living here. Both of our boys were born here. Uh, matter of fact, Zion, my oldest, uh, she went into labor in 2011 uh, in the Big 12 championship in the first inning. And we got walked off, unfortunately. Um, but I go to the car, hey, I'm probably ride back with the team. She's like, no, you're going to ride back with us. Um, so, uh, so, so this place is very, very special. So for her, it was uh, an understanding of what it was. For our boys, um, you know, they had some, some games, and um, I'm driving back in the car with them, and um, we having conversations. They had a sleepover, and I talked to them about, hey, what would you do at your sleepover? Well, we had some friends. What would you guys do? I just had some conversations. I'm like, well, who'd you talk to? I said, oh, I talked to Blair and I uh, talked to the AD from Mizzou. And why are we talking to her? I was like, well, they're interested in offering me the job at University of Missouri to be a baseball coach. And my oldest was, well, you, you got to take it, right? <laughs> um, and so I said, yes. I said, but I just wanted to check with you guys and make sure you guys were okay with it before I made a decision. So um, I think we're all excited uh, about what this means. Um, for our family uh, and what it means for everybody involved in this program. And moving to your new family, whenever there's a transition in coaches, some players decide to leave, some decide to stay. Have you had a chance to talk to any of the players and have you make, got the chance to make your pitch for some of them to stick around? Yes, uh, we, we had a call with them, a Zoom call with them, and, and, and I told them, you know, listen, I understand you didn't agree to play for me. Um, you were recruited by somebody else, potentially even recruited to a different system. But if you're going to go out, and look at other options, then at least give me the opportunity to recruit you as well. I'm not going to assume that you're going to stay, but let's go through the process. The same recruiting process that you're going to go through, if you get in the portal and you start talking to the other coaches, you might as well have that conversation with me. You already live here. You're already in class here. You know everything about this place. Now there's just been a change at the top where well, you're going to go through a change at the top, whether you stay here, whether you go someplace else. So at least give us that opportunity to see if this is a fit for everybody involved. Eric, with your, your track record at, at Southern, Really, really stress the importance to our guys' culture. That we have to have the mentality that we're going to go out and there are no excuses, right? Because at the end of the day, what these kids don't understand and we do all understand as adults, nobody cares why you don't get something done. Either you get it done or you don't. And the reasons why you do or you don't doesn't really matter. If we don't get it done, well then let's figure out why we didn't so we can fix that process. So from day one, I want our guys to understand no excuses. Go after it, bust our tails, put ourselves in a position to be the best that we can be. But more, more importantly, focus on the process. And we will be process oriented, not result driven oriented, right? Too many times you, you focus on the result and you can't control the result. So if we can get our kids to focus on the process, which is something that they can control every single day, and we're striving every single day just to be a little bit better than we were the day before, 
then when you add all those days up, it puts us in a position to be very successful. And when you talk about this league and how we're going to be tested in this league and conference specifically, if you're going out there and grinding it and putting yourself in competitive environments and having success as we define success, then you know that we can go out and put ourselves in a position to make that trip to Omaha. With the portal and having to fill next year's roster and all that, where does hiring, getting a staff in place fall and you have some ideas of where you'll go with, with some of those spots already? Right? Yeah, obviously you want to be able to get that going because you, you got kids that are here currently that are a question what, what's the direction going to be and then you have kids that now that this change is made, again, 422 unread text messages. So um, everything is going to move very rapidly. Um, there's, there, as far as the staffing piece of it goes, I want to make sure that we put together a staff that fits, that understands what we're about, and is going to be, able to be in the best position to teach and develop just as good, if not better, than anybody else in the country. Because that's what is going to allow us to be successful. We're going to have to teach. We're going to have to develop not only them as people, but we're going to have to teach and develop them as players. So I want to be able to amass those guys that can help us do that. Yes, sir, you sort of mentioned your background earlier, which is last in Major League Baseball and the agent side and the front office side. How has that from your coaching career since you've taken those roles? It's given me a well-rounded perspective of every aspect of the game, right? At this point, I've done everything there is to do. And so then now when I'm talking to our players and we're having these discussions about different phases of their lives as it applies to the game of baseball, I've been able to say I've had experience in all those areas. So be it you know guys looking for agents or whatever the case may be and talking about those different things, what it's going to look like, what that transition is going to look like from college to professional baseball, having those conversations. Um, so again, I'm the consummate learner. And so all those experiences have put me in a position to just continue to fill that toolbox, if you will, and have better knowledge to be able to assist our players in being successful. Eric, you mentioned facilities. Are there other places in the program you'd like to see I think the things that they've done and the commitments that Desiree has made to me at this point show the commitment. Um, when you talk about developmental staff, when you talk about developmental tools and those things that play some of the things that we're going to do to enhance what we currently have, lets me know that she's definitely invested. And, and the biggest thing for me when making this decision, as much as this is my dream job, as much as I have always said this is the place that I want to be, it had to be right. And I told my wife I was comfortable if it wasn't the right fit then it wasn't the right fit. We'd stay at Memphis and we were perfectly fine there. But being able to spend some time with Desiree, obviously I know Blair. Um, what I learned about her is she hates to lose like I hate to lose. And that's where the starter is. When you have somebody that hates to lose more than they love to win, anything is accomplished, can be accomplished at that time. Over your years, you know, how, how have you seen NIL kind of change college sports in general? And what, what kind of investment do you see in that in the as well? I think NIL, obviously, we know it's really changed the landscape because you have legislative aspects being applied to college athletics when it comes to NIL. So it's, it's definitely been a been at big impact. And then when you talk about being in the SEC, again, if you're going to be in the neighborhood, then your house has to look the same as everybody else's house to some degree. And so I think the things that we're doing here are cutting edge uh, with the things that we're doing to put ourselves in a position to be in that NIL, NIL conversation. And I think we're going to be right in the mix with everybody else to do the things necessary to provide the best opportunity for our student athletes. There might be a little bit, fair to say a little bit, but maybe a passion, enthusiasm gap amongst fans uh, from Missouri and baseball, maybe compared to some of the other SEC sports. Is there things you can do before next spring to maybe bridge a little bit of that gap? It started today. Today, if, if they don't understand the passion and, and pride that I have in this place, and they don't feed off of that, well, then I just have to continue to build that, right? You got Ian here and, and other people here. It, we have an alumni base that is going to be uh, readily accessible and, and show their passion and, and desire for this place to be successful. And so I think it's that, it's that community outreach and making sure that, again, we send our players out, we're out in the community, people understand. Um, and I think what people like, they like change and they like change that has a positive direction. And I don't know how to put out any other message than that. And so I think if they believe and buy into what it is that we're doing in the direction that we're going, they can't help but be as excited about it as I am. Carefully, we left here in 2015. Did you kind of tell yourself set a goal to come back as a head coach that you can see possible at the time? When I left in 2015, I left for family reasons. 
Um, I didn't know if I was going to get back into college coaching again at that point, right? Um, I, I've, I've had one job outside of baseball. I was a male nanny for a family that had two autistic boys. I was an early childhood special education minor. If I didn't coach, I was going to teach kindergarten. So when we left and we left for family reasons, I was prepared to be a stay-at-home dad and have a blast. And we were having a blast and then I think they got tired of me and they decided to be in school every day. And, um, and what, what ultimately led me back to coaching was um, in March of 2017, my wife said to me, you don't have the same passion that you had when you were at Missouri. You're passionate about what you do. I see that now. We need to make a change and find the situation that's gonna feed that passion. So once I got back into it, that was the ultimate goal was then, yes, I'm back into the coaching reins. I have someone uh, in my wife and partner who is supporting me in that. Then yeah, figuring out how it was gonna happen was, was definitely the ultimate goal. Any other questions, guys? All right. Thank you. Thank you.